Good morning, everyone.
Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Sorry for that major, major, major delay. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Sorry for the delay, okay? Arti na pa akong laptop. Anyways, uh, today we'll be discussing another uh, topic no? sa Geologics 2. So this time, since we're, the, we're done discussing about the different circuits, especially you know, the, the process on how to calculate uh, the formulas behind the series of the parallel circuit, the, the connection of the Ohm's law, the connection of the, the, the Coulomb's law, potential difference in everything. So now, uh, okay, quick reminder, sa, I, I only checked, siguro mga, I guess, 23 Kabuok lang ako na-check sa mga nagpasa sa assignment. How about uh, other people? Pero wala nagpasa mo ba? Ha? Oh, hilom na. Para nag-storya ang mga guilty. Ano lang pasang uban dia sa inyo ah? Hello, amay 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 ulit ako to the laptop or amay to ako to my students. Later I'll be posting the names ah of those people nga wala pa nagpasa sa ilang assignment. Okay? Remember you are on the edge it means that anything that will happen especially in my subjects will affect your what your future plans okay so kung magbagsak ko because kailangan ko magbagsak then i'll be doing it okay now let's talk about So, can you see the point, the, the PowerPoint? Is it visible? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Now, let's talk about simple circuits and the Kirchhoff's uh, law. Okay. Actually, it's Kirchhoff's uh, law. So, the law, the, the, this law has something to do with how are we going to understand no, the difference of the, the use of the actual voltage with an actual electricity and also the, the use of the battery? Because most of the times, we often have this source that do not really rely only on the, the, the power of the electricity. Instead, some of the power sources that we have were really coming from the batteries. Okay? So last time, Niba, we discussed about how the voltage was formed and where the, the, the current will flow. And etc. But this time, how about if we do have this different type of sources, or we uh, we are not only relying on one resource, okay? We are relying on many resources. How can we calculate, okay? How are we going to calculate the the 
what we call this one, uh, you know, the outcome of those different sources on uh, what will be their plan, what will be their, if there be, uh, will it be more on the one, more on the, the, the equation? Are we going to calculate more the connection of those uh, components, like voltage, current, and resistance on solving the, those different resources or sources? Okay, so, okay, so this is how we, quite, we actually, we, we illustrate a simple series circuit no, in, this, in this manner. Okay, we do have we do have the voltage, the resistance, and also the current. Okay, so let's go and let's skip this one because we're done discussing this. Okay. Now, in a certain circuit, we are some uh, actually we are summing up the, the the voltages. Okay, we sum up the voltage, and we have this one. Uh, we can now have this conclusion. That the voltages in a city circuit really equal to each other. It means that we are only, let's say, uh, relying on one specific source. But the sources that we're, but the source that I'm talking about here is not the battery, you know? It could be a, a form of electricity, okay? Or it could be something uh, kind of direct, you know, some mga high powered uh, kind of sources. So where we consider the source voltage to be positive and the voltage drops on each device to be negative. So we're done discussing this one and how the current will flow. So again, uh, it's not just about electrons. It's not just about protons. Okay? It's about the combination of the two and how it is affecting the whole process, especially on the, on the machine. Okay? So the purpose of having the, the, the wire is for us to identify the, the charges, okay? Because uh, usually sa mga, mga wires na makita na ito, na may different, di ba? Na may different na na. Each of the wire can uh, actually accumulate different charges, okay? That will be delivered to, throughout the system, okay? Of the machine. So this is how we calculate for the, for the voltage, okay? Using the Ohm's law, etc. Now, how do we know that the, the, the charge is conserved? Actually, we can also say that the charge is conserved if no, the same amount of the charge passes through each device. And we're talking about the current. Okay, That is how we identify the conservation of the charge. Because we're talking about how the current, how us, let's say, how uh, the single current will flow throughout the system without, uh, without affecting okay, the, the sources. Because actually, separate the current, uh, it came from the, the source, diba? from the voltage. So if we are relying only on one, if the, if the current is, is, has a low capacity to flow in the entire kind of, uh, in the entire circuit, then, for example, those bulbs, those electric lights will also have uh, low pa ng ilahang kanang output niya na mapakita o marilis no low ang light but if you have this high voltage and uh, of course it will affect the current the, the current because only one current is flowing throughout the circuit no then you will find you will find out niya ang light put sa bulb mo pa po siya mo hayag po okay So, okay, so we're going to discuss it this one now. Let's just skip this. Same with this parallel circuit, we're going to discuss it this one. Okay. All right. Let's talk about Kirch, uh, Kirchhoff's Law. I'll be showing you a video class. I want you to listen carefully to the video class huh? because it has something to do with the quiet with the Kirchhoff's rule. So actually the Kirchhoff's rule here, uh, the Kirchhoff's rules only highlighted two, uh, two topics, okay? The loop rule, okay? We call it the conservation of energy. What do you mean by the loop rule? No? When you have loop, gani, it's just, it's the flow, di ba? The, uh, the, the word loop there means that it is all about how the, how the, the current flows through the different components in a circuit. For example, 
will the voltage be affecting the current if we have this high resistance or low capacitance in a resistance? Okay, will it affect the whole process of the circuit if we have high at a high percentage capacitance for the resistance? Or will it affect the, the voltage if we have low uh, power that is flowing through current? Okay, there's a Kirchhoff's rules, man, good on the loop rule. No, that is how the 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 potentialogar. No? That's the flow of how the circuit goes. How will the conservation of energy will be observed in the loop rule? Actually, the sum of the potentials drops, which is the resistors. Like I've said before, class. Uh, if we're talking about the resistors, no, good. We're not talking about the one lang. How how the the specific machine is resisting the flow of this current. No, actually, it's not about the resistance, no, good. Okay, it's not about the, the resistance manner. It's all about how the resistors will going to transform this specific type of the charges into something new. Okay? What about the pasulud ka ogs? Buta talaga no? Murag sa kwan ba? Murag sa kwan pa ng istorya. Gusto, kung nag-duty ka, nag-wapa, mugawas ka nga pangit. Yan nabi tao? Or gusulud ka nga fresh, mugawas ka nga haggard. Okay? Let's just uh, let's have it on that way, siguro, on a simple one, uh, on a simple situation. So that is how the Kirchhoff's rule will explain to us how does uh, what is the role of the resistor and how uh, how will that resistor affects the whole process, you know, in the circuit. So the potential drops since we talk about energy, diba? Since potential energy is also found in, in in every voltage, it is equal to the sum of the potential rises. And we're talking about the source, which is the battery. That is around the closed loop. Okay? So, if we are referring our topic now to the to the function of the batteries, then you know already that the, the battery is a is quite depend on the no? percentage or level of percentage. Niya. Okay, that's the reason why we do have different types of batteries. We're not only talking about the, the class A, B, C, D, A to Z the mga batteries. We're, not, we're talking about the, the voltage contained of that specific battery. Okay? And also, we, all, uh, we have the junction rule. Kabala mo say junction box, class? Kabala mo say junction box? Kita na mo, Dana? No, sir. Wala mo kita, Dana? Actually, junction box is very important when it comes to household electricity class. Because it is somewhat controlling, no, the power of the electricity in our house. Most, uh, most of the times, katong mga kan magod. For example, na aircon ta. Okay, sa aircon magod na sa own junction box. Why do you think na sa lay own junction box? It's because there there might be possibility that uh talaga no, ang planka ang, ang ang general planka sa iyong balay will not be quite, they didn't even manage or controls ang, ang, quite, ang level of, butang talaga, no? ang level of voltage needed for that aircon to, quite, to, butang, to function. So, what is the reason we have this junction box? It is to control. Okay? And it has something to do with the Kirchhoff's rule as well. So, how did the, how did Kirchhoff's rule explain the, the function of this junction? Okay? Why do we have, why do we need the junction box? Okay? So the junction rule means it is also the conservation of the electric charge. Okay, so how, let's talk about the flowing of these electric charges. Okay, and what, how how is it affecting also the, the general planka in balay? So actually, the junction rule or the conservation of electric charge talks about the sum of the magnitude of the current that is going to a junction and equals the sum of the magnitudes of the current that leaving the junction. Okay. So it's the same thing happen gyapon on on the situation ha, mo asa katalagi no isulod ka nga fresh mugawas ka nga hard but how does it happen okay what is the what is the process no okay so i will be showing you a video ha and i want you to listen carefully since i don't i, I cannot explain it with my small whiteboard here let's make it this uh let's have it this way okay Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I won't, I won't, 
I want you to listen carefully in this part because uh, I'll be providing the link later on this video. Uh, this video shows on how are we going to use you know, the, the curve of voltage law and also the curve current uh, law. Okay, because we are we're talking about two different uh, let's say two different kind of components here that is really affecting the whole process of the quant or the whole meaning of the law. Okay. In this video, we're going to go over Kirchhoff's voltage law, abbreviated KVM. Go some class. Now, his law states that if you have a closed circuit, okay, that's the right. voltage okay, that's right. is Now, some voltages are positive and others have a negative. So you need to determine which one are positive and which ones will be negative. Now, let's say if we have a resistor, and let's say this is at 20 volts and this is at 10 volts. You know that current naturally flows from the direction of high potential to low potential. So it flows from positive to negative. Now our resistor consumes energy. And any time the current flows from a high electric potential to a low electric potential, the energy of the charges that are flowing in that circuit is actually being reduced. Energy is being transferred from the charges to the resistor. So therefore, because the resistor decreases the energy of the charges, we're going to assign a negative voltage to it because it reduces the energy per unit charge. And that's what a volt is. One volt is one joule per unit. So voltage is basically the energy change per unit charge, which is basically per one volt. Now a battery does something different. In a battery, the current can flow from low potential to high potential. So this could be zero volts and this could be 12. And when you see this, whenever the current is flowing from a low potential to a high potential, that means that the energy of the charges is increasing. And so this is going to create a positive voltage because the battery is transferring energy to the charges. And so it increases the voltage of the charges on a resistor decrease the voltage of the charges. Now let's see if you remember. So let's say if we have a resistor and the current is flowing in that direction, will we assign a positive voltage or a negative voltage to the resistor? So keep this in mind, resistor always creates a voltage strong. It always consumes energy from the charges. So please assign a negative voltage. Now once we have a battery, that's listed this way. And there's a current flowing in this direction. This battery, is it increasing the energy of the charges or is it decreasing the energy of the charges? And compare it to this situation. So what if we reverse the battery? Well, let's say the current is still flowing in the same direction. So which one should we assign a positive voltage and which one should we assign a negative voltage? Now keep this in mind, any time the current flows from then a high potential to a low potential, the energy of the charges is being reduced. So it's going to be a negative voltage. Now, any time it flows in the opposite direction, that is from a low potential to a high potential, then the voltage is increasing. The energy of the charge is increasing. So looking at this diagram, the current is flowing from positive to negative. So it's going from a high potential to a low potential. So this battery reduces the energy of the charges. Now for this one, it's going from a low potential to a high potential. So it's increasing the energy of the charges. So we should assign a positive V to this value and a negative V to this value. Now let's work on some balance problems. So let's say if we have a battery and it's connected to four resistors in a circle. This is the positive terminal and this is the negative terminal. 
let's say it's a 12 volt battery. And this is going to be 8 ohms, 10 ohms, and 12 ohms. So this is R1, R2, R3. So write an expression that highlights Kirchhoff's voltage load. Show that the sum of the voltages on the circuit must add to zero. Now the current is going to leave the positive terminal now, so it's going to be flowing in this direction. So as it flows through R1, the voltage will decrease. But the battery, I'm going to set the current flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal of the battery. So the battery supplies the energy to the circuit. So you're going to put positive VB for the voltage of the battery. And then negative V1, that's the voltage drop across R1. And R2 also creates a voltage drop. And R3 will also create a voltage drop. And based on Kirchhoff's voltage law, the sum of all the voltages in the circuit must add up to zero. Now let's use that equation to calculate the current in the circuit. So the voltage of that is 12 volts. Now we know that V is equal to I. And so the current is the same in the circuit because there's only one path for the current to flow. And so what we have is a series of so V1 is going to be I times R1, and R1 is 8 ohms. So we can say that V1 is 8 times R1. V2 is I times R2, I times 10. So that's going to be 10 times R1. V3 is going to be 12 times the current that flows through it, which is I. So now we can add these long terms. Negative 8 minus 10. That's negative 18 minus 12, that's negative 31. So this is going to be negative 31. Now let's move this to that side. So we have 12V is equal to 39. Then let's divide both sides by 3. So the current that flows in this circuit is 12 volts divided by 30 ohms, and that's equal to 0.4 ohms. Now, let's say the electric potential at this point is zero volts. Let's calculate the electric potential at these points. So, what is the electric potential at point A, B, and C? So, notice that the potential difference of the battery is 12 volts. And so, since this is a positive sign, A has to be higher than this point. So at point A, the voltage is, or the potential is 12 volts. Now, what is the potential at point B? So we need to calculate R1. So we can use V is equal to I1. So we have the current, which is 0.4 amps. Now let's multiply by R1, which is 8. So 0.4 times 8 is 3.2. So the voltage is going to be it's going to drop by 3.2. So if we take 12 volts and subtract it by 3.2, this will give us a potential of 8.8 volts at this point. Now, if you want to show the work, here's what you can do. So we're going to start with this equation, Ohm's law. The potential difference is equal to the current flowing through the resistor times the resistor itself. Now the change in potential is VB minus VA. And with the resistor, we know that this voltage is so let's put a negative sign. So this is going to be negative I times R. So to calculate the potential at point B, it's going to be a potential at point A minus I times R. So the potential at A is 12. And then subtract that by a current of 4 times resistance of 8. And that will give you 8. Now let's do the same thing for point C. So we can start with this equation. Now this is going to be VC minus VB. That's equal to negative I R2. So the potential at C is going to be the potential at B. Minus I R2. So at B is 
and the current is 0.4, and R2 is 10. So if you type in 8.8 .8 .8 minus 0.4 times 10, this will give you 4.8 volts. And so that's the potential at C. Now if you take the current, which is 0.4 amps, and multiply by R3, which is 12 ohms, you should get the difference between these two values. So 0.4 times 12 is 4.8, and that's the potential difference across R3. And so that's how you can solve this particular circuit using KVM voltage. Now let's work on another example. Let's say if we have this circuit. This is going to be a 50 ohm resistor, which we'll call R1. And R2 is a 30 ohm resistor. So here we have a 12 volt battery, and here we have an 8 volt battery. Go ahead and use Kirchhoff's voltage law to calculate the current in the circuit. Now the first thing we need to determine is the direction of the current in the circuit, because we have two batteries. Now the 12 volt battery wants to send current in this direction, so that is the clockwise direction. And the 8 volt battery also wants to send current in the clockwise direction. So therefore, these two batteries, they don't oppose each other. They support each other because they want to send current in the same direction. So now that we know the direction of the current, let's set up the equation. So let's call this VB1 and VB2. So the current flows from low potential to high potential for VB1. So therefore, VB1 increases the energy of charges. So we're going to assign it a positive voltage. The resistor consumes energy from the circuit. So we're going to assign that a negative voltage. Now current flows from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So therefore, the battery increases the energy of the circuit. So that's going to be plus VB2. And then this resistor will consume energy from the circuit. So that's going to be negative V2. So VB1 is 12. We can replace V1 with I times R1. So that's I times 50, or simply 50 I. VB2 is positive 8. And V2, that's going to be I times 30. Now let's combine like terms. 12 plus 8 is 20. And then negative 50i minus 30i, that's negative 80i. So moving this term to that side, we have 20 is equal to 80i. So if we divide both sides by 80, 20 divided by 80 will give us a current of 0.25 amps. So now that we have the current flowing in a circuit, let's calculate the potential at every point. So let's say this is point A, B, C, and D. Now let's say that the potential at point A is zero volts. Calculate the electric potential at every other point. Now we can see that the voltage across the battery is 12. And the plus side indicates that the top side is higher than the bottom side. So the potential at point B has to be 12 volts. Now the resistor, R1, is going to drop the voltage. To calculate the voltage drop, it's simply I times R1. So the current is 0.25 amps multiplied by resistance of 50 ohms. And so the voltage drop there is 12.5 ohms. So 12 minus 12.5, this is going to be negative 0.5 volts at point C. Now you can set up the way we did in the last problem. 
You can say that the voltage drop is I times R1 with a negative sign because it decreases the voltage. And VC minus VB is equal to negative I times R1. So you can say that VC is VB minus I times R1. So VB is 12, I is 0.25, and resistance is 50 ohms. So 12 minus 0.25 times 50, this will give you negative 0.5 ohms. So that's the potential of point C. Now, what about the potential at point D? So we have a battery that's 8 volts. And this is the positive side, which means that this side is going to be 8 volts higher than that side. So if we take a negative 0.5 and then add 8 volts to it, this will give us 7.5. So that's the potential at point D. Now, let's confirm that A is indeed 0. So let's use this equation. The voltage drop across R2 is going to be I times R2. And so VA minus VD, because we're going from D to A, that's equal to this value. So VA is going to be VD minus IR2. So VD is 7.5, the current is 0.25, and R2 is 30. So if you type in 7.5 minus 0.25 times 30, this will give you zero the potential. And so it goes to show that Kirchhoff's voltage law does work. The sum of all the voltages in the closed circuit will always add up to zero. Let's try another example, but one with a lot more stuff. So this is going to be a 50 volt battery. Here are the positive terminals. Here are the negative terminals. This is going to be 30 ohms, we'll call it R1. And then this is going to be 70 ohms, which we'll call it R2. And this is going to be a 10 volt battery. And also, this is going to be a 20 volt battery. So first, we need to determine the direction of the current. So let's call this battery 1, battery 2, and battery 3. So battery 1 wants to create a current that flows in this direction, away from the positive term. Battery 3 wants to create a current in this direction. And that is a counterclockwise current. This is a clockwise current. So those two batteries oppose each other. And this battery wants to generate counterclockwise current. So these two batteries are in support of each other, and they're against this one. However, 50 is greater than the sum total of 10 and 20. So therefore, the current is going to be in this direction. Now let's go ahead and calculate the current. So this battery will create a positive contribution to the circuit going to increase the energy of the circuit, so we're going to say it's positive 50. Now the current is flowing in a different direction for this battery. It's going from high potential to low potential. So this battery will create a voltage drop. So therefore, we're going to assign it a negative value. And here the current flows from high potential to low potential. But here it flows from low to high, so that's a positive contribution. But here, since it flows from high to low, it's going to be a negative contribution. So this battery will decrease the energy of the circuit. Now let's write an equation. So the first battery will add 50 volts or 50 joules per coulomb of charge to the circuit. R1 is going to consume energy from the circuit. So the voltage drop will be the current that flows through it times R1. And R1 is 30, so this is going to be. 30 times I. Now this battery reduces the energy of the circuit, so that's going to be negative 20 volts. This one also reduces the energy of the circuit, so that's going to be negative 10 volts. This one also consumes energy from the circuit, so that's going to be negative 70 times I. 
This is supposed to be R2. And so all of this is equal to zero. So now let's combine like terms. We have 50 minus 20 minus 10. So that's equal to positive 20. And then we have negative 30 minus 70. So that's going to be negative 100. Now let's move this to that side. And so 20V is equal to 100 times 9. So the current is now 20 divided by 100. And so in this example, we have a current of 0.2 amps. Now let's call this point A, B, C, D, and E. Let's calculate the potential at each point. Let's say that A is at zero volts. So B has to be 50 volts higher. So this is going to be at 50 volts. Now let's calculate. So it's going to be a current of 0.2 amps times 30 ohms. So the voltage drop across this resistor is negative 6. So if the potential is 50 at B, then at point C, it's going to be 6 volts plus. It's going to be 4 volts. Now this battery will reduce the energy of the circuit by 20 joules per or by 20 volts. So the potential at D is going to be 44 minus 20, which is 24 volts. Now this battery also reduces the energy of the circuit. So it's going to decrease the energy by 10 volts. So now the voltage is going to be 14 volts. And to calculate the voltage drop across R2, it's going to be the current multiplied by R2. So negative 0.2 times 70, that's negative 14. So that's the voltage drop across this resistor, and 14 minus 14 brings back to 0. So now you know how to calculate the electric potential at every point in a circuit. The key to understanding how to solve these types of problems is to know which device will increase the energy of the circuit and which device will decrease the energy of the circuit. So resistors always consume energy. So they will always decrease the energy of the circuit. So therefore, they will always have a voltage drop. So we should always apply a negative V voltage. Now a battery can either increase or decrease the energy of the circuit. And for this, you need to look at the direction of the current. So if the current is flowing from a low potential to a high potential, then the battery is increasing the energy of the circuit. So in that case, we need to apply a positive voltage to this battery because it's added voltage to the circuit. Now, if the current is flowing from a high voltage or high potential to a low potential, then this battery is reducing the energy of the circuit. So we need to apply a negative voltage to it. So hopefully you understand that concept, and it's going to help you to solve more complicated problems than the ones that we covered in this video. This is simply a basic introduction. Okay. So you you heard, uh, heard it already, no? On how the Kirchhoff's rule is happening, especially when we talk about the quite that is in the involvement of the voltage. So let's talk about that one, okay, before Tamag ends the discussion. No? So let's talk about the voltage rule for the Kirchhoff's voltage uh, law. Question about the video. Does that have a concept? Yes, sir. I'm going to see Philip now. So how about the others there? I'm going to Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Ah, pati pati magatago activity din. Hindi siya mo reflect sa inyo hang mga kwan. Just like what happened last time sa ko assignment. Okay. Like reflect inyo hang yes sir sa ko last time. 
Okay, so about vol uh, the voltage rule. Okay, so again, uh, we're talking about the source that we're talking about here is the battery. Okay, it's about because it's only the battery that has this, let's say, naashi kwanu naashi capacity to to kwan to be involved in every circuit because uh, we're not only using one battery, diba, in a specific device. We usually use different or uh, the numerous numbers of batteries. But how does the voltage rule happen to be conserved in a circuit? So, so video yung ako nakit ang ganyan naman good, uh, the, the, the conservation of energy, especially the voltage, will only happen if the total voltage of every, okay, every involved huh, in the resistance to the current will equal to the zero. Okay? Always remember the potential difference class. But the potential difference is all about the volt is equals to the potential energy divided by the, the charges. No? So on the on the on the video, Galina, uh to 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 find out if the one if the voltage is really equal to the different voltages that is actually consisting no, in every in every kind of battery. We have to make sure that those uh, that the the amount that happened to be calculated with the involvement of the different resistors and also the calculated current will equal to zero. Okay. So this is how the point should be. That is this is how the rule is all about when it comes to the voltage. Okay. So from the voltage source, which is the battery, and at the moment it is traveling now to every resistors. Or the, with the resistance happen to be on the on, on on that stage, it should be equal to zero. Okay, so remember again a, a friendly reminder coming from the video ganina. From, I hope the the the, the dongal to ninyo. You have to one. You have to remember now that the role of the resistor when it comes to the circuit is not actually to resist the flow of the charge. Instead. It filters. It means that it is changing the voltage, or it's it is changing the charges that is coming, that is flowing through them, or flowing through it. Okay. So if the if the voltage source is uh, the the current flows from the voltage source is is positive or highly potential, or a highly potential energy, but about the resistor that it will turn into a negative. Okay. Because we're talking about conservation here. And then, coming from the negative, from, from the positive to negative, it will be conserved and will turn into a positive again once moved out na siya sa resistor. Okay, now for example, no, the, positive, the positive voltage here will, will flow to the resistor. Okay, then from the positive, it's negative. And then, mubalik na po siya rito. Okay, it depends because the, when, the end of this, kana, the end of this loop, mga good class, Will be negative. Kanisha dani yung sa iyang low level capacitor. Kanisha dani. Okay, it will be negative. So it means that bisa pang unsa ka taas na siya ang voltage so sa ka source. If the flow of the current is is uh, is opposite, then we'll have the opposite charge on on return. Okay. So kung si again kung magflow siya sa positive, it's safe to say that from the resistor it will turn into a negative. Okay. And then it will now flow directly to the R2, will be negative as well. And it will flow directly to the R3, which is negative as well. So what will be the result of the potential difference of these components? Positive or negative? Hello? Okay. But good. What will be the answer, but good? Karel, are you there, Karel? Oh. Ano hindi na kawalang uban? Pante sa Thursday ha, pag di mo pangatulong tamo face to face, di mo magtubag ha. Zero ang tamo dalit yung siya record, tamo takamutanan. Okay? So what do you think will be the answer? At of course, it will be negative because we're talking about how the one, how the voltage will flow from resistor to resistor to resistor. Okay, so again, it again, huh, the the source of the voltage 
depending on this charge, will also be something uh, when, will result from just the outcome that is opposite of the charge coming from the voltage. Okay? If the high potential here is positive, then you will have to, when, to conclude that the, the of the voltage that is passing through the resistor that has this capacity you know, to formulate a negative charge will now flow or now will now result to a negative charge as well. So a mobile exa voltage, which is, for example, the battery, is negative. Okay? The device is the same as magnetism. If the op opposite attracts, okay, how will you flow an energy or how will you allow the, this, this kind of, you know, these charges to flow if you are, what? If you are, if you have this kind of resist resistors or, for example, no, voltage source that is, uh, let's say, repulsive. Okay, do you think the charge will flow if it's repulsive? Of course, no, diba. Sa video ganina, diba? We have different sources of battery. And then the last example given was that what if the the battery is now opposing, okay, opposing to the to the first battery, and so as the the third battery is now opposing to the second battery. Okay, so mga la, so logical na situation nga in, uh, uh, logical situation. In, in a logical situation. So the charges really have something to do when it comes to the conservation of energy. Now, it's the same thing when it comes to the current rule as well, sub Kirchhoff's law, okay? You have to take note that uh, on the junction, the junctions that I, that, uh, that, is, that was meant is that in every current flow among good, there should always be a junction. It means that there should always be the there should always be a change of the electric charge that will flow uh, together with the current because only the current will flow, diba? We call it current when the charges are flowing. So, asa ang junction, Danny? The junction here is in the middle. Okay? Kita mo na yung arrow nga kung gibutang, Danny, is gikwan, gikwan sa center, no? Sa mag T. This is the junction class. Okay? Now, if we have here, butang talaga, no? Uh, ang ato ang kanang current one here is positive five, and then we also have here uh, uh, a, a current that is also flowing on the current two, which is positive six, and so as the current three, which is positive ten. All you have to do now is to to mine, okay? Now, if the junction here is the one that is converting these charges from positive to the negative, and it is flowing in in in, in the junction, if the positive five current is flowing to the junction here in the middle, kani, the result will be negative on the current 2. Okay? So, let's say that the current 2 here is negative 6 na. And also have, we also have here uh, a, kwan, a current na 3, which is 10. If we pass through this junction, then it's safe to say that we also have here a negative 10. Okay? But again, uh, it will be dependent on the where the voltage will, will flow. Okay? So we'll continue this one, Siguro, next meeting. I'll, have, I'll show you another example of how the Kirchhoff's rule or the law is applied in in, uh, in illustration or in a given kind of sample uh, problem set. Okay? So for now, uh, I'll go on, Siguro. I'll be sending to you the one. I'll, I'll send to you the, the link. I want you to review the, the video. And then on Thursday, on our face-to-face, -face, we'll have a sample kind of problem solving. To, uh, let's have an illustration as well for us to, then to, to understand more on how the Kirchhoff's law is being applied and how is it really affecting the whole equation of electricity. Okay? So that's it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for attending the class. I hope you have... Uh, I hope you have you, know, you have absorbed something, some information coming from the video and also the one that we are discussing right now. Okay? So take your lunch and goodbye. Okay, good bye. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Bye, sir. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Philip.